Andrew McCarr, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast, nearly messed up again there. Um, delighted to be joined by the Cutman himself, Mr. Cutman himself, Jamie Sheldon. Jamie, before we talk about why you're here in Miami, you're obviously doing the corner with Liam Williams. Just tell people a little bit about Jamie Sheldon. Uh, to be fair, mate, there's not really much to know. Um, obviously, like you just said, I'm out here with Liam Williams, obviously, as his Cutman. Um, that that kind of job that I've ended up with um, coming back years ago, mate, do you know what I mean? Fell into it by accident. Um, and I've been lucky, a lot, of, a lot of it's right place, right time, got into it uh, back in the early days when there weren't many coming about, obviously in that market, it's, it's absolutely flooded with them. Uh, and I've just progressed from there, mate, just just enjoyed what I've um, I've been doing, enjoyed my work, and, and it's it's brought me here. Yeah, I'm quite lucky, mate, to be honest, you know yeah, what I mean? So am I, to be honest, Jamie, but you're more than just a cutman, you're a hand wrap specialist. I see that, let me see if I can get that Empire Tape t-shirt in there. You, you do a little bit with... Empire Pro Tape now, I, even the casual boxing fan will see Empire Pro Tape on the the, the hands of most professional yeah. fighters, UFC fighters and stuff like that. Just tell me about that sort of side of your life as well. Um, that, that, that come about five five years ago, I think 2016, I got called from Empire Tapes, which is a, a, a massive tape company. Um, they supply tape for every trade going around the world, um, obviously all boxing fans. Uh, and they wanted to make a fight tape, brought me in, would I help them develop one? I said yes. And rest pretty much history. Um, obviously, they've got a passion for fight game. So once we develop the the pro tape for the hand wraps, uh, we managed to like go into other products as, and all your corner supplies, and and we've just grown from there, mate. To be honest with you, do you know what I mean? It's, it's been a good, interesting journey. That's that's good. No, like I see you at every show nearly, uh, whether it be an MTK show, an Eddie Hearn show, Frank Warren show. I know you go to like the Fight Island in Abu Dhabi for the yeah, UFC yeah. as well. So you're you're a, a jet setter more than what I am. I, I, is that safe to say? Uh, I th- I, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Kind of. It's, I've been lucky, mate. Yeah. If, I've, I've been lucky. It's, it's kind of one of them where, where when you get into this trade, you're doing it for love at sport. Um, it, you're doing it as... It, it, obviously, at first, it's an hobby as well because, obviously, you've got to go to work and this, that and other. And I think it's like anything. I think you get out what you put in. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people do a couple of years. They're not on TV. They're not working the big shows. And, and, and they're packing. Um, I've just kind of stuck with it. Uh, and I'm going to have to give my missus a bit of credit for that, like, do you know what I mean? For yeah. put, putting up with me being away all the time. Do you know what I mean? So... Yeah, and that, that's how it went, mate. You just get out what you put in. Well, talk to me about. I want to go. Uh, you love for the sport, but it's not just boxing you're in love with. You're an MMA, probably MMA more so than, than boxing. Is that safe to say? Because you used to do a little bit yourself. Yeah, I won't. I won't say. I mean, I like MMA more, um, but I think that, that what happened with the MMA kind of thing is I fell into that by accident as well. Um, I had some I like your accident, eh? You're accident prone. Yeah, honestly, oh yeah, I'm very accident prone, mate. Yeah, um, and I just fell into I fell into that by accident. And the thing is, I just love combat sports. I love the one man against another man. Do you know what I mean? I just I just like that. And I fell in love with that. And and the thing is, with being a cut man as well, it's not just yeah, I'm working with a boxer on MMA fight. You're helping people. So I get a bit of a buzz out of that when I th- when I actually sit and think about it. I get a buzz out of helping people, and I think that's what I'm here to do. And obviously, because I could mix both sports together. I want if if I literally did a boxing show every weekend, you have too much of a good thing, mate. You get bored of it, because yeah. I can mix it up uh, and what have you. Uh, I seem to keep just keep enjoying them. And the other thing as well is, as a cut man, MMA has been a godsend because to learn your trade in MMA is brilliant because you can use elbows, you have more cuts. Um, so that's just and a lot of the stuff I learned in MMA, I've managed to bring back over to boxing as boxing's evolving yeah. as well. So yeah, so I won't I won't actually say I'm a bigger MMA fan because I think from a working class town or whatever in England I think everybody loves boxing yeah. that's the original combat sport to me do you know what I mean so I think that's that's it well, well, Jamie talk to me about the, the sort of like I know you've worked with Tony Bellew and you've worked with some big stars in the UFC as well but just give me rattle off a couple of names the, the people that you've the fighters the, the elite fighters that you've worked with in boxing and MMA oh well obviously obviously I've worked world title fights all through boxing um, a lot of them and I've got to give credit to trainers for actually having me as well your Dave Caldwell's um, obviously Dominic Ingalls, that's why I'm at. Yeah, Grant Smith, uh, he's been a big influence as well because obviously that's the gym that I'm based at, do you know what I mean? Obviously he's had Charlie Edwards with WBC, so it gave me opportunities as well. Um, obviously with UFC, I've worked with some absolute legends in, in in UFC as well, do you know what I mean? So I've, I've been blessed, but I don't look at the big names. I don't see a big name and think, oh, I'm working with a, a big star. To me, it's just another fighter and I'm not going to give him any more time than I would a kid doing a four-rounder. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because my job's exactly the same. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, Jim, I've got to ask, like you said there that the MMA side of things, you get more cuts and stuff like that. Yeah, you're yeah. busy, busy. So in the boxing world, you don't get many cuts. So when, you, when you're sitting in, in the corner and stuff like that, are you sort of like secretly wishing for a cut to happen so you can get in there and work your magic? No. 
No, 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 no. That's that's one thing I've never done. I've never wished wished for a cut because the difference with MMA and boxing is with boxing I'm employed by that fighter. So uh, with MMA I'm employed by the promotion. So a lot of the fighters I work with in MMA, I would never wish to cut on anybody. Mm. It's, it's it's not nice. I don't like. I don't want to see kids bleeding for a start. I don't want to see kids injured. It's just not a nice thing. But like I said, we in MMA. I don't generally. There's a lot of fighters in the on the bigger shows. I don't know personally. Whereas boxing, I'm employed. I'm employed by the fighter. So. I've usually built up a relationship with them. So it kind of can be quite personal, so I want to look after them the best I can. And the last thing I need to do is see them hurt. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously, like I say, especially like, here for, here for example, we're, we're, we're miles away from home. I don't want our kid to get hurt. And then have to track him doing all that travel, getting home and all that sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? So that's one thing I don't do. But what I do know is that if he does get cut, the, the, the skill set I've learned over the years, uh, there's not a lot you could throw at me now that I've not seen before. Uh, so I'm quite confident that I can keep the kid in the fight. And if he entrusts me to employ me and bring me on board, it's, it's happy days, you know what I mean? It's that, that's where I'm most proudest, when they're bringing me in for the, for the big fights. Well, I was surprised to, to see you here. Like I say, I see you on every, every show, and, uh, well, MTK show anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, shout out to Tommy McCormack because he's, he's yeah, there yeah. as well. Um, but you're a hand wrap specialist as well. Like hand wraps is, is, is would you, almost like an art form nowadays in the way certain certain people wrap their hands and stuff like that and with your empire tape pro tape yeah, background and stuff like that you've got down to a fine art and stuff like that yeah. how would you consider it an art form and stuff like that, the way you wrap something's hand i would consider it an art form uh, as such the thing with it with the hand wrapping that come with the mma side of things this is where it flipped over so back in the day when i first got into boxing the boxing culture generally wrapped their hands uh, over time with MMA, the cutmen wrapped the, the fighters' hands. Yeah. And these cutmen who wanted to work MMA, the, to get the work, they had to go away and practice and practice and practice. Where the boxing coaches weren't practicing, practicing, practicing. But for me, I always had a bit of obsession with things. I'm a little bit OCD. I like things to look right. Um, and I'm not scared of asking questions. I've messaged cutmen from back in the day and said, What do you think of this? Can you help me with this? Or, or whatever. And it's the time that you put in with hand wrapping. Anybody could wrap hands if they're willing to put the time in. But the problem is, not many people are. Um, so obviously because I was doing the MMA shows as well this is another reason why MMA has helped me a lot I was doing the MMA stuff and you might wrap six, seven, eight pairs of hands on one MMA show mm. I know I've done uh, local shows and I might have wrapped 15 to 20 pairs of hands on a night so you're constantly practicing and the thing with me is as well is I've, I've worked alongside some good physios so the physios have helped me as regards the hand injuries now anybody can put a normal box standard hand wrap on but when a fighter comes and says this is broke, this is damaged I've injured this, I've had surgery on this can you wrap his hand to look after the, those injured areas? Uh, now the physios that I've worked with have been absolutely brilliant. They've helped me. They've given me advice. Do you know what I mean? And, and like I said, it's just practice, mate. It's you, like, like back, back to that saying again. You, you get out what you put in. Yeah. Well, let's talk about why we're here in Miami. I mean, not just yeah. this, not just this t uh, get our bald nappers nice and tanned oh, like we've no, been doing for. We're trying. We're trying, our, we're trying our best anyway, but. Uh, you're getting to enjoy the sun a little bit more than me, which is good on you, mate. You deserve it. But the reason why we're here, Liam Williams, uh, world title fight yeah. against uh, Demetrius Andrade. Obviously, your team, Williams, yeah. you think he's going to win. How does he win? Uh, break down the fight for me. Uh, break down the fight for you. Well, I think looking, because what I try and do, I didn't know I was coming out here until only a, a two or three weeks ago anyway. Uh, Dominic Ingley, he kind of brought me in later on. Uh, and I don't, when I get when I get given a fight, I don't start looking it up because I, I try and just think about my job, what I've got to do. When I do get here though, I will, I've spent more time watching Andrade than I have Liam and looking at body language in this and other. And from what I'm reading, I think Liam's got in his head a little bit uh, this, this week from what, I, what I've seen up close. Uh, and I think he's, I think we how we were talking in a couple of interviews, I think he's overlooked. I think he's overlooked Liam a little bit. Do you know what I mean? I'll probably get slated for saying it, but I think, I think Liam might stop him. Uh, probably eight, nine. The, 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 the later rounds, I think he'll definitely get to him. You're not the only one that said that, to be honest. I, I'm on my Twitter and I see people saying that Liam can yeah. do it and he can stop Andrade and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, I've seen Andrade fight, he's slick, he's a southpaw, yeah, fights yeah. on off the back foot, he can come forward as well. So he is a dangerous fighter in himself, but yeah. a, a lot of people are feeling confident on Liam and I'm guessing you're the same, you, you, you feel that confidence as well? Yeah, I, I don't want people thinking that my confidence is coming because obviously I'm part of him and I'm being biased. I genuinely believe... I think he'll try and be slick, but I think Liam's got. I think he'll just pressure him and pressure him into making mistakes, and then Liam will. I don't know whether he'll, he'll, he'll back him up onto ropes and have his way with him, or he'll try and bully him a little bit. Uh, I think that's that's the way it'll gonna go. But I'm, I'm I'm dead certain from body language and what I've seen this week, he's overlooked Liam, and I think his team have as well. From what I've been, because obviously I'd, I did the um, the rules meeting and just listening to his team, they're, they're talking about fights, maybe two or three fights down the line. They're kind of just writing Liam off. 
Uh, and I, th I think that's going to go into, uh, play into our hands and go, go our favour. No, we're definitely looking forward to it because if, if that Wayne's got anything to go by, I mean, it was quite a tasty yeah. press conference yesterday. We got a little bit, and then the Wayne yeah. sparked off as well. I was almost hoping because Andrade had a, a guy there doing, the, doing a, the, the screaming and all that for him. I was hoping, yeah. where, the, where, the, where, where the fuck is Jamie? Why is Jamie not piping up? So I was hoping that you'd come up and give your own sort of stuff. No, the, th the thing is, I'd, lo I'd love to pipe up, but you've got to stay a little bit professional. I don't know who that kid were. Uh, but you always get one when you come to these these gigs abroad. You, you always get one, and he's, he's obviously he's he's getting into it. Do you know what I mean? He's he's standing up for his fight. But Liam's dad were doing a good job, of shouting and piping up. Not that I could tell what he was saying in Welsh, but <laughs> he were he were he were doing a good enough job. Um, do you know what I mean? And like I said, I, I try and I don't try. I try not to get involved in all that sort of that sort of stuff because obviously I've got a job to do tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? It don't look really good for Liam and his team if. If his cut man's rolling about with some, with some, fight. even though don't get hey, me wrong, get me my views though. Yeah, oh, I'd get a lot of views, mate. But don't get me wrong, like if that were back in England, somebody would have probably slapped him anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's one of them things. It's just part and parcel at the old, the old show this week. Thing is, fifteen hundred fans are going to be there as well. We're going to get a little bit of atmosphere, the needle and stuff like that. So you, you're looking forward to a good night of boxing tomorrow. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to try and get over there early and see some of the other fights as well, um, and, and and really get into it rather than just turn up and work Liam and, and come. I want, I want to experience. Cause obviously, I've done. I did the UFC Abu Dhabi. They had some fights in for Conor McGregor. Uh, but I want to see some fans back in boxing. Yeah. Uh, box, I didn't realise how much boxing needed fans until all this this yeah. start. When the first they were doing shows behind closed do doors, I were. Um, I just thought oh, it'll be fine, but they, they are missing the fans now, and it, it's time we got them back in. So I am looking forward to tomorrow. One final prediction then for tomorrow night. Yeah, quick prediction for the UK fans back home. They might put a bet on. What is Jamie Sheldon's prediction? My my prediction. I said round eight earlier, didn't I? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to stick with that. I think Liam stops him round eight. There we go. Well, Jamie, the sun is still out. Um, we're in the shade, which is good because we are bald men <laughs> well I chose this life uh, let's go and enjoy some last bit minute sunshine and uh, not a problem Jamie like I say I see you every show and it's a pleasure to talk to you I appreciate it mate thank you very much anytime brother anytime